After all, animals, they want to live. When you slaughter the chicken, how do the chicken behave? Does the chicken say, you want to slaughter me? Okay, slaughter. <laughs> the chicken, does the chicken do that? No, the chicken want to escape. That means the chicken wants to live. So why Muslims have to kill the life? Sometimes you slaughter the cow, the sheep, the chicken. This animal may be the mother or the father in the family. And when you slaughter them, pity their children. They may not see their parents anymore. <coughs> and after all, eating animals also, you get a lot of diseases. But if you eat vegetables and fruits, it's also good for your health. Enough spice or you want more? <laughs> okay? So isn't this contradictory to what you say Islam promotes love to animals? Okay, these are questions from my Buddhist friend. Ah, okay. Alhamdulillah. The answer. Okay. About the killing of lizards. Uh, I check about the killing of lizards and when I look into the hadith, I use the software. Okay. Uh, in this hadith, I did not find about the killing of lizards in Bukhari, Muslim and so on. But I found the hadith in Sunan Abu Dawud. I can't remember the exact reference now, okay? And it was narrated by Aisha, okay? May Allah be pleased with her, <laughs> that people were saying they're killing the lizard on a Friday night, okay? You get a lot of rewards, rewards. And Aisha said this is not true. This is not true in that hadith. So this answers your question, number one. Number two to your second question, the you want hot and spicy or original recipe? <laughs> okay, hot and spicy. Okay. If Muslim loves animals and so on, loves life, why kill animals? Because animals have life, right? So you should show mercy to the life, the creatures of God. The answer. Number one, not only animals have life, even plants have life. <laughs> now, if I slaughter one cow, I kill how many life? One life. I sacrifice one life. How many people can eat to their field? How many people? Maybe about 100 people you can feed them with one life cow, right? But if I want to eat, let's say, only plants, let's say rice, for example, how many rice I have to kill in order to feed one person? All these rice are potential life, right? Isn't it so? So how many lives I'm killing just to feed one person? So people may argue and say, but you know, Brother Shah, the plants are also alive, I agree. But plants have less senses as compared to animals. So it is a lesser sin to kill plants as compared to animals. This is how they would argue, the Buddhist or the Hindu. This is how they would argue. So the answer, let's say if you have a brother, few senses less. He's blind, deaf, and dumb. If someone commits murder to your brother, would you go to the judge and say, oh judge, please be lenient to the murderer because my brother had less senses compared to other people. He had three senses less. So be lenient to the murderer. Would you say that? Or would you tell to the judge, oh judge, my brother was handicapped three senses less, and this guy can kill my brother, give him a severe punishment. So now when plants have less senses, it doesn't mean less sin. You will go the other way along. Now to the question, people will say, you know plants, if you cut off, it will grow again. If that is your criteria, what about lizard? You know, if you cut lizard's tail, it will grow. So is it okay to eat lizard's tail? <laughs> This is just for purpose of discussion. Purpose of discussion. Now, if you say these are God's creatures, the animals are God's creatures, they have life. What about plants? Plants are also God's creation. They also have life. If God didn't intend us to eat animals, then why did God give us pointed teeth? Because carnivorous animals have pointed teeth, whereas herbivorous animals have flat teeth. As human beings, we have both flat teeth and also pointed teeth. And also our digestive system. Carnivorous animals can digest meat. 
herbivorous animal they digest plants but our digestive system allows us to digest both the plant and also cooked meat of animals we can digest both so if god didn't want us to eat animals why did god provide us with this no islam is a universal religion universal religion that means you are able to practice islam wherever you are on the face of earth if you can only eat plants vegetation what are you going to eat if you are in desert cactus if you can find <laughs> if you can find cactus and every day cactus today fried cactus tomorrow we have curry then cactus latna okay then cactus soup <laughs> What about it if you are an Eskimo, for example? What would you eat then? You can't be growing plants on ice. <laughs> so Islam is a practical religion. But if you are a Buddhist or a Hindu, you become a Muslim, for example, and you have to remain as a vegetarian, no problem. You can continue your life as a vegetarian in Islam, and yet you can still be a good Muslim. But do not say forbidden what Allah has made permissible. Is that so okay? Yeah? Come to argument? Just want to share. Uh, okay. This, I heard a story that uh, the Thai Sunan, the, the Wali Sunan in Indonesia, when they spread Islam, uh, after it went, uh, they have a Muslim community, and the Sunan asked the Muslim not to eat cow in order to respect the Hindus. So, I, mean, uh, I mean, I agree with you that if the Hindus Yes, true. See, I become a Muslim 13 years ago. Until today, I don't take beef. Not because I say it is haram. It is my personal preference, and I don't consider myself any less Muslim just because I don't take beef. And in Islam, yes, eating of animals is permissible. Killing animals is permissible only for food, not hunting for pleasure. Uh, this is how you see Islam show love to animals. Okay, not hunting animals for sports or pleasures alone. Okay, next. You can also ask Christian directly. So I have a question asked to me by a friend. Okay. Uh, he has read a book written by uh, about Prophet Muhammad by mm -hmm. Martin Lee. Okay. So I also have read a book. So in the last few chapters. Uh, of the autobiography uh, of Prophet Muhammad, uh, I think Lin uh, uh, wrote that Prophet Muhammad is a slave. Uh, and then I think my Sarah. I think. And then from uh, and with that relationship, the Prophet uh, had a son named Ibrahim. So and then Prophet uh, asked me, how come a Prophet can have a uh, have a son with a slave and not a wife? Because <coughs> in Islam is not okay. possible. Right? So uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure on that incident itself, okay? But by the book of Martin Links on Prophet Muhammad, so Allah has allowed. Many a time Martin Links take his references from Western sources, okay? Not necessarily from an authentic source. So there are certain contents from the book of Martin Links which are questionable because of the sources that he refers to. That is point number one. Point number two, I cannot uh, explain about the case of your question in specific because I'm not sure of that incident. I'm not sure. But when we say slave at the time of Prophet Muhammad, it doesn't mean like slave that we have the idea today. The slave at the time of Prophet Muhammad, they also used to get income, earnings. They have to be paid. And if their pay is too little, they have the right to go and complain. My pay is too little. Okay? That was the slave, not like in Kunta Kinte, you see roots. <laughs> okay, not the Western way of slavery this point number one and point number two uh, when the slave is you have a relationship with the slave okay uh, then the slave is not considered like what you call it's just a mere tool for pleasure alone and so on and as far as i understand all the women that prophet muhammad had were actually wives wives of prophet muhammad but this one exactly i could not answer because i'm not sure of the case but i'm just answering in general Unless if someone knows the answer specifically, you can add on. 